Okay, so here is what has been going on. The FBI just called. They need our help because they are investigating some money laundering scheme. They have already identified hundreds of accounts that are linked by transactions between them. So all of them might be involved in that. But probably there are some central players. So next thing, the FBI wants to kick in some doors, search some offices and so on. But they don't know who to prioritize. So they need our help to find the most important node in this network. Welcome back to Complexity Papers. And welcome back to this course on networks and complexity. So the FBI thing didn't actually happen. But many similar things have actually happened to me in the past. See, if I work with industry, very often we are asked to prioritize, to find important targets for some tasks or investigations. For instance, I worked on modeling supply networks, basically, you know, industrial manufacturing supply. And there's a question, who is my least reliable supplier? Who is most dangerous to my production if they fail to supply what they promised me? Or maybe we work with a pharmaceutical company who are searching for new drug targets in a network of protein interactions. Eventually, they're going to probably explore all of these proteins, but they want to start with the most promising candidates. So how should they target their efforts? See, finding the most important node in a network is a very common and very important task. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to find the most important node. We will approach this question like we always do on this channel, by looking at a simple example to organize our thoughts. So let's look at this network. Just looking at it, what do you think the most important node is? I guess most people would say it's node number five. But you know, I showed this to a friend of mine who is a very successful businessman. And I asked him, hey, what do you think? And he said, well, obviously, the most important node here is node number one. Because if it wasn't the most important one, why would it be number one? And you can't argue really with this logic, right? I mean, this is some good out of the box thinking using other information that is available to us here. So which one is it? Is it node five or is it node number one? Well, we can't decide. And that is the first important message here. Just looking at the topology and so on, we can't really say who is the most important one. It all depends on context. So, but of course, in this video, the name of the game is figuring out which one is the most important node from a network topology perspective. And if you've been following this course, you'll probably already have some ideas how to do this, right? For instance, we saw that for network robustness, when I attack a network, it's very important how many links the attack removes. So if I want to harden this network against an attack, the most important nodes to focus on are the nodes of high degree, where an attack, if successful, would remove many links. So this is our first notion of importance in a network. This is called degree centrality. And degree centrality just says the most important nodes are those that have the highest degree. So if you use this notion of degree centrality, yeah, node five is the most important one. But that's not the only notion. Let's see, what else can we come up with? Well, remember Kevin Bacon? Our idea that important nodes are close to others in a network? Well, that leads to a concept of closeness centrality. We say the most important node is the one that's closest to all others in the network. From lecture two, we know Dijkstra's algorithm, and that allows us to compute the distance between nodes in a network. And because we can compute the distance of nodes in a network, we can also compute how far every node is from everybody else. So if we sum over all other nodes, then we can find the average distance that one node is from all the others. But of course, the nodes that are on average very far from everybody else are not the most important ones in the network. 
they are the least important ones. So to define closeness centrality, we don't take the average distance from all other nodes. We take the inverse of the average distance from all other nodes. You can compute this with this equation here. And I leave this as an exercise, but the result won't surprise you. So, are there any other notions of centrality that we can come up with? Well, how about this one? If you think about the FBI example, you might think that those nodes are very important that sit on shortest paths between other nodes in the network. If there's really money flowing around, then maybe those nodes that sit on the shortest path, they see the most transfers coming through. So maybe those are ones that are interesting to focus on. So this gives us the following idea. We could compute the shortest path between all nodes in the networks. And whenever a node sits on the shortest path between two other nodes, then we give it one point. And who has the most points in the end? Well, that is the most important node. Well, we also have to specify what we do if there are two shortest paths that have the same length between nodes. And maybe then we just divide the point up. Yeah? So this idea, this is the idea of between the centrality. And again, we will compute between the centrality for this network in the exercises. With all these centralities, you might wonder, which one is the right one? Which one should we use? Degree centrality, closeness centrality, between the centrality. What is the best? And again, the answer is, it depends on context. So there is no universal true centrality. It really depends on what question we are asking, what our application is. In the best cases, we can derive the specific centrality that is geared towards our problem. And I want to show you this derivation of centralities that are geared to one type of problem in a very famous example, the so-called spectral centrality. So to derive our bespoke centrality metric, we have to start from an idea. And the idea I want to start with is the following. Important people have important friends. So if you want to write this as an equation, we can write the importance of a node is the sum over the importance of the node's neighbors. And I write this with such a sum here, where these brackets below the sum mean I sum over the neighbors of node i. Now, this is an interesting idea and a neat little equation, but there's a problem with this. And this problem is this equation actually does not have a solution. How can we see this? Well, imagine node i is the most important node. Then it would mean it has the highest centrality. But if I now have a node j, which is a neighbor of i, if you compute the centrality of j, j sums over all its neighbors. And among the set of neighbors is also node i. But that would mean that j is at least as important as i. So this cannot be, right? Then i is the most important node, but j is at least as important as i, possibly even more important. That's a contradiction. So this approach doesn't work, but maybe we can salvage it. Okay, let's try this again. Here's the second attempt. We say important nodes have important friends. So to compute the importance of a node i, we sum the importances of all of i's neighbors. But then we divide by a factor, which we call lambda. If we choose this lambda right, this might have a solution. And we will come back to this and see how lambda needs to be defined to make a solution possible. But first, let's deal with the ugly sum, right? Because the sum over neighbors, this is not a nice mathematical object. So what can we do about this? Well, here's a trick. And this trick is, we can use the adjacency matrix. Remember the adjacency matrix from part one of this course? Well, this is a matrix that describes the connectivity of a network, right? So we define A as a matrix such that Aij is one if nodes i and j are connected. 
and A i j is zero if nodes in i and j are not connected. Using the adjacency matrix, we can write our sum in a much nicer way. Instead of summing only over the neighbors of i, we sum over all nodes j. But to make sure that we actually only add up the neighbors of i, we multiply a i j into the sum. So basically, because a i j will be zero for all j that are not neighbors of i, we are now still only summing the terms that come from neighbors. Now, if you look on the right-hand side of this equation, this is a pretty peculiar sum, isn't it? Sum over a i j v j. Does this remind you of anything? Well, it should. Because this structure, whenever you see it, it's a sign that we are on the right track to a nice solution. So what is this? Sum over a i j v j. That is what happens when we multiply a matrix with a vector, right? Remember what you do when you multiply a matrix and a vector. You take a row of the matrix and you multiply it with the column vector. So the matrix elements that you multiply are the a i j's and you multiply them with the v j's and then you sum over the results. So the sum over j, a i j, v j, that is one row that is a result of a matrix vector multiplication. So one element of one vector that we compute in this way. So this is one importance, vi. So if you do all of them at the same time, we can write the result as a matrix vector product. So what this means is we can compute the importances of all nodes at the same time. And the equation that governs that, that is the vector of importances V is 1 over lambda A times V itself. So if we bring the lambda to the other side, we now got lambda V is A V. What is that? Oh, wait a minute. That's an eigenvector equation, right? So basically the solution is we get a vector that contains all the importances by computing an eigenvector of the matrix A for the eigenvalue lambda. So now we know how we need to choose the lambda, right? We need to choose an eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix as our lambda, and then there will be a solution. And the solution for the importances is going to be the corresponding eigenvector v. Simple as that. Now, the only question remains, which eigenvector should we choose? Well, here's an idea, right? We probably want our importances to be positive numbers, right? We don't want nodes with a negative importance. And there's only one such vector that has only positive entries. And that is the eigenvector that corresponds to the greatest eigenvalue of the matrix. So in summary, this is our idea for spectral centrality. We take the adjacency matrix of a network, and then we find the greatest eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector. And then the elements of this eigenvector, these will be the importances of the individual nodes. Cool idea, isn't it? A closely related form of spectral centrality is the heart of an algorithm known as PageRank. It's named after Larry Page, one of the founders of Google. And PageRank is what made Google the best search engine in its early days. So if you had known about this idea of spectral centrality, say, in the year 2000, you could be a billionaire right now. So in this first video of this lecture, we have seen that there are many different notions of network centrality. And you can't really tell which one is the right one. But you can derive the right notion for your understanding of the system. So you can construct a bespoke centrality for whatever application you have in mind. And since we have already studied dynamics, if you have a dynamical system, right, you know that other eigenvectors the eigenvectors of the Jacobian matrix, for instance, play a major role. So you might use them to study who is the most important node. We will come back to this in the exercises. But for now, 
there's maybe one question left to answer. And this question is, how do we actually compute these eigenvectors? Because we might need to compute eigenvectors of pretty large matrices. Isn't this complicated? Well, I will show that it's actually quite easy and very efficient in the second part of this video. But maybe first you want to join me for some exercises. And always remember how to find the most important node in a network. In any case, see you in the next one.